So you got yourself the new Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4 and you're excited to get started and folding your device. It could be overwhelming because foldable devices are so different from all of the other devices that are available in the market today. So in today's video, I'm going to walk you through 5 things that I will recommend you to do when you first unbox your Galaxy Z Fold 4. I'm going to be using my own personal unit of the Galaxy Z Fold 4 that I have just transferred all of my data from the Galaxy S22 Ultra using Samsung Smart Switch Utility. You don't have to follow this step but it is just what I have. Starting off, I'll actually recommend you to get a screen protector for the cover display because Samsung doesn't have any pre-included screen protector for this entire year and also moving forward I think. So this is not really a necessary step for everyone but yeah it's just something that I don't want to live with because I get some kind of anxiety when I'm using my own personal device if there's no screen protector. So yeah I have also ordered a case but it has not arrived yet. Now speaking of cases let's move on to the real first tip. The case of your choice. Actually, it's more like you have to decide whether or not you want to use the S Pen Fold Edition together with your Galaxy Z Fold 4. And if you do, then you need to get different types of cases to house the S Pen Fold Edition together with your phone. Now, Samsung does have a brand new case that is massively improved in terms of design over the previous generation. The new case has a swappable design so you can either use the S Pen holder or change it to a kickstand instead. However, even though this design is brilliant, I would still say it's kind of annoying since you have to swap constantly between the S Pen and also the kickstand holder. If you want to use the S Pen Fold Edition but you want to use some third-party case, then there are some choices available but they are very, very limited. A lot of people say good things about the Subcase Unicorn Beetle Pro with an S Pen holder, but that design is just not something that I prefer. And by the way, all of the cases from the Galaxy Z Fold 3 will not fit on the Galaxy Z Fold 4. And number two, you need to customize how you actually unlock your device. Now, there are actually two ways to unlock your Galaxy Z Fold 4. You can either use the physical fingerprint scanner on this side here that also doubles as a power button, or you can use face unlock. Now, we'll talk about the fingerprint scanner first. Heading into the settings menu, going into security, you can customize whether the fingerprint scanner should read our fingerprints at all times. So if we enable this option, then you just need to touch the fingerprint scanner. You don't have to press on the power button and then it will automatically unlock. Now I find this feature to be quite annoying since it always detects the wrong thing. As in, you know, I touch the phone a lot. So even if my palm touches the fingerprint scanner, it will try to read my palm, which is not what I intended to do. I'm also going to be a boomer and tell you that Back in my days, fingerprint scanners used to be at the back of the device and it was great. We can actually swipe the fingerprint scanner to bring down notifications or bring up Samsung Pay. Technically, we can still do that with the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4 but we need to head into the settings menu and customize it. You can head into the settings menu, find this option and here you can enable either you want to swipe down for notifications or swipe up for Samsung Pay. You can enable or disable either one of the options and it's entirely up to you. For those who prefer face unlock, you can choose to directly bypass the lock screen when it scans your face or you can also choose to stay on the lock screen until you swipe it away. I chose the former because I don't like looking at the lock screen at all. And number three, you technically have two different home screens. And yes, you read that right. The first home screen is of course the cover display, the one that we have here. And all of the arrangements that I've done here is different from the one that I did for the inner display. So if I just, let's say I uh, create a new home screen and then I'm gonna throw the gallery here on the last individual page. Then on the cover display, whoop, you can see I do not have the last page and the gallery is still at the bottom bar here. So with that in mind, you can technically rearrange all of the app shortcuts, your folders and also your widgets however you want and then it won't be the same between the two home screens. However, if you do want to sync both of them together, you can because if you pinch in, go to settings, there is a setting called cover screen mirroring. So if you enable that, then it's gonna look a bit weird because all of my cover display pages, as you can see here, I got 
first page, second page, third page, and fourth page looking like this. Then I, when I unfold it, yeah, the pages are like splitting it into two different halves. I don't know how to explain this, but you can see it's kind of weird. So for me, I keep things separated because I don't need the phone or contacts app when I unfold the device. And the reason why I am making an emphasis on this point is because of point number four, the taskbar. So when you unfold the Galaxy Z Fold 4, you can see the bottom bar here has a few apps in mind. So what we do is that when we open up an app, we can see the entire taskbar as in the bottom bar of apps here will become inside the taskbar. And this plays a huge role in terms of multitasking. My advice for you is to put your most commonly used apps down at the taskbar so you can swap between each of them with just a single tap. And we can also customize the taskbar as well. So you see, if I hold here, then we can hide the taskbar. And then if we tap again, then we can enable it again. And other than that, we can also tap and hold apps from the taskbar and drag it up into multitasking view as well. And honestly speaking, this is multitasking made easy. But we are not done talking about multitasking since it's quite a big topic on its own and we'll leave it for another time. So stay subscribed for that video. And onwards to number five, we can also force apps into certain aspect ratios. Now the Galaxy Z Fold 4 has an unusual aspect ratio for both the cover display and also the inner display. And I think the cover display is using a 23.1 by 9 aspect ratio if I remember correctly. And the unfolded display is still using a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. Some apps like Instagram is kind of okay when you use the cover display but when you unfold and use Instagram, then it will be pillar box into a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Pillar box as in having black bars on both sides of the display instead of the top and bottom side. And this is because if we view Instagram in a 4x3 aspect ratio, then the standard 1x1 image will not be displayed at a single glance. You will need to scroll up and down to get a complete view. And that is why Samsung automatically just pillar box Instagram for you to 16x9. And of course, we have to head into the settings menu to customize all of this. So yeah, you can select every individual app to lock into a certain aspect ratio depending on what you like. Some apps work better than the others and some games can even scale between both the cover display and inner display flawlessly. Kudos to those developers but I think many more developers are going to optimize their apps for foldable devices because yeah, Android 12 L or Android 13 for that matter has a new guideline for all the foldable devices and how app developers can make it work. And finally, I have one bonus tip for you. So particularly for us here in Malaysia, we're gonna get one extra year of warranty and I've confirmed this with their customer support and they said that that extra year of warranty is activated automatically upon purchase and activation of a device. So yeah, if you want to know how to claim the free three times inner screen protector replacement thing, then you can check out an article that we did down in the description below as well. And yeah, those are the five tips that I have to share with you. They are real simple and I would say there are a lot of different quirks and features that you can explore on the Galaxy Z Fold 4 and those customizations are mostly due to how different the Galaxy Z Fold 4 is compared to any other slab smartphone like the Galaxy S22 Ultra for example. So yeah, I hope this video is useful for you to get started with a new Galaxy Z Fold 4. Do let me know what is your favorite tip and also what is your favorite feature with the Galaxy Z Fold 4 and I will see you guys in the next video where we talk about multitasking on the Galaxy Z Fold 4.